we're going to be looking at wave motion. A progressive wave is also known as a travelling wave and it transfers energy from one point to another. And it does that through a series of oscillations or vibrations, so that's a movement about a fixed point. However, a progressive wave does not transfer particles from one point to another. So there's no large scale transfer of matter. This graph is showing you the displacement of the particles that are along a wave at a given instant in time. And so at each point in the path of the wave, the particles oscillate about their equilibrium position. And the equilibrium position is also known as the rest position. So it's the position they would be in if they were not moving. So that means when they're at, it's at zero displacement. And so at each point along the wave, the particles are oscillating about the equilibrium position, transmitting the wave energy forward. This is a movie clip of a slinky being moved to form a transverse wave and a longitudinal wave. They're both progressive waves because the wave energy is moving forward. But the difference between the transverse wave and a longitudinal wave is the direction of the oscillations relative to the movement of the wave energy. For a transverse wave, the direction of the oscillations or the vibrations is perpendicular, 90 degrees, to the direction of travel of the wave energy. And example of transverse waves would be electromagnetic waves, so light, radio waves, microwaves. Now, for a longitudinal wave, the direction of the oscillations or the vibrations is parallel to the direction in which the wave energy is traveling. And an example of longitudinal wave would be sound. So going back to the movie clip, you can see each slinky coil for the transverse wave is oscillating perpendicularly to the direction in which the wave energy is traveling. So the wave energy is traveling to the right and each slinky coil is oscillating up and down. For the longitudinal wave, each slinky coil is oscillating parallel to the direction in which the wave energy is traveling. So the wave energy is traveling to the right. You can see each slinky coil is off oscillating left and right, so parallel to the direction in which the wave energy is travelling. So here we have again the graph of the displacement of each particle along the wave at a given time. One characteristic of a wave is its wavelength, represented by the symbol lambda, and this represents the distance between two consecutive points on a wave which are in phase. So that is, it's the shortest distance between two points that are moving in step with each other. And so that is the distance from crest to crest or peak to peak, or the distance from trough to trough. The wavelength can also be determined from any point along the wave to the next identical point which is in step or in phase with the first. Another characteristic of a wave is its amplitude, given by the symbol capital A, and this represents the maximum displacement of the particle from its equilibrium position. So it is the height of the peak from the equilibrium position. The next characteristic of a wave is period, 
given by the symbol capital T. And this represents the time taken for a complete wave to pass a point. So if we look at this animation and consider the first point in the wave, where you can see the particle is oscillating up and down. So if we consider for when the time it takes for a complete wave to pass this first point, so the time from one peak to the next peak, that will give us the time period. So we'll start the clock when the first peak arrives at that point, and then we'll stop the clock when the second peak arrives. So here we go, 0, 1,000, 2,000. So it took two seconds for one peak to the next peak to pass. So we can say the period for this wave is two seconds. You can also see as one wavelength passes a point in the time period, the particle completes one full oscillation. So the period also represents the time taken for a particle to complete an oscillation. Frequency of a wave, given by symbol F, is equal to the number of wavelengths that pass the point per unit time. So that is how many waves are passing per second. And the units of frequency is the hertz. So from the definition of period, we know that one complete wave passes a point during a time period. So in one second, we would have one divided by the time period waves that would pass a point. So one divided by the time period is representing our frequency. Because remember, frequency is the number of waves that pass a point per unit time per second. So one divided by the time period is the frequency. So the units of hertz is equal to a per second. You might find it easier to explain this relationship if we use numbers instead of symbols. So if we consider one wave passing a point in two seconds, then from the definition of period, which equals the time taken for one wave to pass a point, we can say the period is equal to two seconds. So how many waves would we have passing a point per second? So in one second, how many waves will pass a point? Well, that will be a half. And if you remember from the definition of frequency, frequency equals the number of waves passing a point per unit time or per second. So we can say the frequency is 0 0.5 hertz. And so we took our time period and we did 1 divided by our time period, so 1 divided by 2 seconds gave us our frequency of 0 0.5 hertz. So we can see from the equation that frequency is inversely proportional to the time period. So here we have one particle having one complete oscillation in one time period. If we were to double the frequency, the time period would half. And so in the same time as the original, we would have two full oscillations. And so we can also represent frequency as the number of oscillations that occur per unit time, or the number of oscillations occurring per second. Wave speed is the distance travelled by the wave energy per unit time. From the definition of frequency, we know that there are F waves each of wavelength lambda that pass a point per unit time, so pass a point each second. So in total, 
the waves will travel a distance of f times lambda per second. So f lambda, the frequency times the wavelength, represents the distance travelled by the wave per unit time, so represents our wave speed. And so we can say wave speed equals frequency times wavelength. So the syllabus expects you to be able to derive this equation and this is what you need to know to be able to do that. Again, you may find it easier to use numbers than symbols to derive this equation. So that's what we'll do next. So if we have a wave of frequency 3 hertz, that means each second you will have three waves passing a point. So if we consider this point here, each second three complete waves will have passed the point. And if the wavelength of the wave is 4 metres, then each second the distance travelled by the wave will be 4 metres times by the number of waves, which is 3. So the distance travelled per second will be 12 metres per second. And the distance travelled per unit time represents our wave speed. So we can say the wave speed is equal to 12 metres per second. And you can see we found it by timesing 3, which is our frequency, with 4, which is the wavelength. So the frequency times the wavelength equals our wave speed. We know that a wave travels a complete wavelength during the time period and we define speed as the distance travelled divided by the time taken. So for a wave, the distance travelled will be its wavelength and the time taken will be its time period. So if we substitute for S and T into this equation, we can see then that the Wave speed is equal to the wavelength divided by the time period. We know that the frequency is equal to 1 divided by the time period. So if we substitute for the period into this equation, then period is equal to 1 divided by the frequency. So the wave speed is equal to lambda wavelength divided by 1 divided by frequency. If we tidy that up, we get our wave speed equals frequency times wavelength. This is an easier proof to derive the wave speed formula, but it may not get you the full marks in the exam, particularly if the exam question asks you to derive the wave speed formula from the definitions of frequency and wavelength, then you'll have to use the first way in which we derived the equation. So this equation is showing you the relationship between frequency and lambda for a wave travelling in a certain medium. Then its wave speed will be constant so you can see that the frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength. So here we have a complete wave of wavelength lambda. And if we were to double the frequency, then the wavelength will half. So frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength if the wave speed is constant. The diagram is showing you the displacement of the particles along a wave at five different instants of time. So first at time equals zero, then a quarter of a period later, half a period later, three quarters of a period later, and a full period later. If we consider the wave at the first peak here, we can see as time goes on, 
it has moved forward and during a full time period that the wave has travelled a full wavelength. If we now consider the displacement time graph for one of the particles along the wave, so we'll look at this particle here, you can see during a full period the particle has completed one full oscillation. So at time equals zero it had maximum displacement. At time equals a quarter of a period, it had zero displacement. At time half a period, it had maximum negative displacement. At three quarters of a period, it had zero displacement. And a full period later, it had maximum positive displacement. So in one period, a particle has completed one full oscillation. If we now consider a progressive longitudinal wave, and we consider the particles along the wave, and again we're going to look at the displacement of the particles at different times. So the time axis is going vertically downwards. We can see then that the particles are oscillating to the left and right and you can see the oscillation is parallel to the direction in which the wave is travelling which is to the right in this case. The dashed lines are representing the equilibrium positions, the rest position zero displacement for the particles. So this curve is representing the displacement of a single particle against time. And we can see when a particle has done completed a full oscillation, that time represents the time period, the wave has moved forward by a distance of the wavelength. The feature of longitudinal waves are rare refractions and compressions. So rare refraction are where the particles are widely spaced from each other and compressions are where the particles along the wave are close to each other. So for a sound wave the compressions would represent positions of high pressure and rare refractions would represent positions of low pressure. And it's important to note that these positions of rarefaction and compression move forward as the wave progresses. So for the longitudinal wave you can see the compression is moving along the wave and the rarefaction is also moving along. 